Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Cecilia Ahern and her latest YA releases. So Cecilia came to my school a few weeks ago and gave a really interesting talk. So um, this is her first YA release, it's called Flawed. Um, this is a sequel perfect um, and Flawed um, you are in a dystopian world and um, before we move on actually I'd like to say that um, it's the most original dystopian world I've read for a good long time. Um, I feel like since the Hunger Games things have been sort of stuck in a rut so I'm so pleased to be able to recommend this to you. Um, this is um, based around Celestine who um, is deemed as perfect by the, um, the perfect person in society. Um, the society in which she lives in, um, you are judged for your moral decisions, so um, you are sent to a uh, flawed court and there are judges and they decide whether your moral and ethical decisions have been correct. So if you made um, a mistake at work which cost the mon um, business money, then you'd be sent to flawed court. Um, the book centres around Celestine and she breaks um, a rule and is sent to Lord Court and everything takes off from there. Um, incredible first book, um, I loved it, read it very very quickly um, and the second book takes um, so where it left off it carries on and um, just as gripping, in fact um, the second half I couldn't put down, um, it was very quickly 1am um, and it helped actually like um, getting through it that the chapters were very small so you go oh I'll just, I'll just read another one it only take five minutes and then five minutes later you wanted to read another chapter and another chapter yeah I loved it. Um, so HarperCollins have been very lovely um, they've given me a copy of Perfect to give away so if you would like um, to win this um, leave a comment here or I will put a link to my blog in the description and leave a comment on the blog post that's gone live over there. Um, I was very lucky um, to interview uh, Cecilia so I'm going to um, put that after this, after I said goodbye um, and I think you'd really enjoy it. So enter this by leaving a comment and I will see you a lot soon. Bye! I just uh, had a talk um, in the main hall um, and you were talking, you talked briefly about with the Marvel Collector, um, you did research so you went and did two days with a, um, yeah. a marble maker, yes. a glass um, person. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering, because you said it took you um, a year to um, write a book from start to finish, um, how much of that time do you take up with research? That is a good question. <clears throat> so I'm always, I'm always researching while writing as well. but. Um, I think as I come to the end of one novel, my mind starts opening up to new ideas, and that's the point. So, like right now, and for the last probably five months, I've been thinking about my next idea, and I'm just, it's just bubbling in my mind. I don't really start researching it until I know it's time to start writing, because what happens is, as soon as I research, the idea grows and the story grows, and then that's when I'm going to want to start writing. Um, so, you know, sometimes there's ideas in my head for a couple of years before, for a year before. I know this is a very long way of answering your question, um, because there is no straight answer. But so far right now, I'm, it's been about five months of letting this particular, no, it's about a year since I came up with it. And then about five, six months since I decided this is the one I'm going to write for the next novel. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so you've had a jump from YA, uh, from, sorry, adults mm. to YA very successfully. Um, and well, I'm here, so yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's brilliant. I've, I've read the first one, I've just bought the second one. Um, <coughs> would you say it's any different to writing for adults? So, No, I'd say the writing process was absolutely the same. Um, all I, and I, I didn't even decide to write a young adult book, I, I just came up with the idea for Flawed and Perfect and then wanted to tell it from the perspective of a 17 year old and just doing that, it became a young adult novel. And, and then I think the change is in seeing a story from another character's eyes um, and I tell it from her voice with her point of view and that's what makes it different. So I, no, I didn't have to do some great big marketing strategy about you know, how do I write for for young adults. What do they want to know? It was really just about seeing the world from a different character's eyes. 
Have you seen? Have you found events have been different? So um, young adult events rather than adult events. Um, yes. Yeah. That's where it's been different. So the promoting of it has been completely different. Um, coming to schools has been fabulous. I haven't been in school for a long time, so coming back last year to promote flood was. Um, it's funny. I felt you know the kind of that anxious, nervousy feeling of going back to school. I hadn't been there for so long, but the reaction has been fantastic. And then I did a lot of. Um, fun events you know uh, people were dressed up fancy dress we do quizzes and games it's a lot more playful um, sometimes it's a lot more playful so yeah that, that's the part that's been the most different okay um, <coughs> so um, when we had the talk um, you said that um, it took you six months to write each book yeah. um, and you usually take a year so um, were the deadlines different or was it um, is it a different kind of thing to writing the adult books? Um, well, there's two reasons. One is that I'm contracted to deliver a book a year. Um, and I know that doesn't sound very creative, but that's the reality. I've recently just signed a contract for a book deal. So that's for 2018, 2019, 2020 and 2021. And so when that's the case, you have to deliver a book at a certain date every year. Um, and then the other thing is that I, I write very quickly, so it suits me. I, I'm happy to stick to that time because I think quickly and I write quickly. And it works well for, for my style of writing. That it's, as soon as I get an idea, I have to tell the story. As soon as I start the story, I have to finish the story. So it's all very fast. Um, and, and with Flawed, I wrote Flawed in six weeks, which is the fastest I've ever written a novel. And that was because edits on one particular book that I usually during the summer do during the summer were very there weren't, there weren't very many and I had a lot more time on my hands so I wrote that in six weeks. Wow. Um, what are you reading at the moment? <clears throat> I am reading Jack Reacher. Uh, it's Ian uh, Lee Childs and it's called Night School and Lee Childs is one of my favourite authors and Jack Reacher is one of my favourite characters and I've been saving it. Saving it, saving it for months and months and I love it. Good. <laughs> um, and you said in the um, in the talk <laughs> again that uh, you have your own office and it's separate from the house. Mm -hmm. um, when did you make that jump and why did you decide to do that? I made that jump after I had children because um, obviously as a writer I was working at home and that was easy to do when I was on my own. But I also didn't want life to work was kind of spilling into my life and I wanted to be able to separate that and um, leave, go to work, come back, have my life and be able to concentrate and focus more and um, and that's been the case and I also have, it, it means that I have one particular space where I can be creative as opposed to printers being in my kitchen table and you know <laughs> things uh, and you know all my books and boxes and posts everything arriving to my house. I want my home to be my home and my work to be my work. And even though writing is a passion and a hobby and all of those things, it is also a job. So I wanted to keep that outside of my, my family life. Yeah. Um, that's it for my questions. So thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. Yeah. It's lovely to speak to you. Thanks. <laughs>